The universe loves you. Your body's natural inclination is to want to heal, to want to thrive. There are forces outside of our reality which are trying to move us towards a better future. Are these new age ideas? Sure. Today, let's talk about how the force of gravity and Everett's many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics could be giving us clues to how the ideas we've just looked at make sense. We start with a point. In my book and this blog, we've talked about the fact that physicists tell us gravity is the only force that exerts itself across the extra dimensions. The only force. Seems like a pretty significant statement, doesn't it? In Einstein's description of the universe, gravity is pictured as a bending of our 4D space-time. Objects like stars bend the fabric more than you or I, and objects that are nearer to each other are more influenced by gravitational attraction than objects that are far away from each other. But as we've discussed in entries like What's Around the Corner, the concept of far away takes on a whole different nature when we're talking about extra dimensions. And now that scientists at Oxford are giving support to my idea of the fifth dimension being our probability space with the fifth dimensional camera project, these ideas are moving closer to the mainstream. Now the image we're looking at here is familiar to fans of this project as coming from the original 11 minute animation. It's a simple depiction of a person's fifth dimensional probability space. Chance, choice, and the actions of others move us along what we think of as our 4D line of time, but we're actually twisting and turning in the dimensions above. At the quantum level, random outcomes are happening continuously, one plank frame after another, and most of those balance each other out to the point of being inconsequential at the macro level. But every time a more significant event occurs, or someone consciously chooses one path over another, all those random quantum outcomes come along for the ride as we branch off into a new 5D path. In Entangled Neurons, we looked at a fascinating new theory which connects to this. For each of us, our memories are created by these fifth dimensional branches and cusps. In entries like You Have a Shape and a Trajectory, we looked at how some outcomes are more likely than others for each of us based upon our current life path, or world line as some physicists prefer to say. But what happens when we incorporate gravity into this image? If we think of the parts of our probability space that are more likely to happen, then we can start to see how the fifth dimension would be much like the general relativity image we're looking at here of the Sun. There would be a central mass of the most probable pasts and futures, and the fifth dimensional fabric of reality would be warped somewhat by the gravity of those more likely versions of our universe which, as Everett's Many Worlds interpretation tells us, are not mere theoretical constructs, but just as real as the reality you and I are currently observing. So let's look at our three New Agey statements within the context of the above ideas. The universe loves you. Ultimately, as Einstein and a number of the other great minds of the 20th century have said, the distinction between past, present, and future is meaningless. This means that our universe's basic physical laws and locked-in fine structure constant have already created a set of versions of the universe that are each part of its wave function of all possible outcomes. From our space-time perspective, this means that the version of our universe that lasts the longest already exists, while the version of the universe where some science experiment goes wrong tomorrow and destroys all matter is a much tinier part of the fabric. Which version exerts more gravity? Why, the one that has greater mass within the fifth dimension. The low probability science gone wrong scenario may exist, but it's not the one with the greater mass because it soon ceases to be part of our 5D space-time tree, so to speak. In that sense, the universe that lasts the longest is the one that is drawing us forward just through the weight of its existence within Everett's many worlds. Your body's natural inclination is to want to heal, to want to thrive. Likewise, the version of your eye that dies tomorrow in a car accident must exist, but exerts very little influence compared to the versions that continue. With this project, we've talked a lot about addiction and negative loops, and how so many self-help systems work because they rely only upon a person's willingness to embrace the better version of themselves that already exists. Are you doing things to yourself that you know are keeping you from getting to the healthiest, happiest version of you? Then stop 
It really is that simple. You just have to say to yourself, now is the time that I make the change and the rest can follow. Meditation, positive visualization techniques, drinking more water, eating more fresh fruits and vegetables, getting more exercise. Changes like these allow you to tap into the better version of you that already exists. And the science of epigenetics confirms that these changes are real right down to the way our DNA is expressed and even what DNA patterns we pass on to our offspring. There are forces outside of our reality which are trying to move us towards a better future. There are information patterns within the multiverse landscape of extra dimensions that have selected our unique universe from out of the omniverse of all possible universes. In God 2.0, we looked at the work of Stuart Kaufman, founding director of the Institute for Biocomplexity and Informatics at the University of Calgary, who has written a book called Reinventing the Sacred, which finds ways to blend these ideas of science and spirituality together. Even well-known debunker Michael Shermer, editor of Skeptic magazine, is willing to accept this God 2.0 concept as a definition of what created our universe. Does a force that moves you towards the best possible version of you, that forgives your mistakes and embraces your potential, sound like a description of love? Does a selection pattern that has already created a version of the universe and a version of you that grows and thrives sound like the description of a benevolent God 2.0? If you see this as a possibility, then you're on your way to accepting that love and extra-dimensional gravity are two ways of describing the same thing. In blog entries like Holograms and Quanta, Strength of Gravity, Speed of Light, and Gravity and Free Will, we've looked at an interesting new theory saying that gravitons, a theoretical particle which has never been observed, don't exist, and that the unique value for the strength of gravity we're experiencing here arises as a natural outcome of our position within the multiverse landscape. With today's entry, we could translate this to say that the amount of love in our universe is also something that just is, and that moving to other parts of the multiverse landscape would move you to other universes where the amount of love was lesser or greater than what we find ourselves to have in our own universe. Can there be too much gravity? Absolutely. A universe with too much gravity would collapse back in on itself, and interesting structures couldn't be formed. Can there be too much love? Perhaps the same logic applies. Our universe has enough love to want the universe to thrive and continue, but not so much love that it removes our freedom and suffocates us. In Gravity and Entrainment, we talked about how another New Age idea, the Law of Attraction, can also be tied into these discussions. The idea of equating love with gravity came up during my interview with Karis Alexander, and I'll put up a link here to the video I created of that interview. If you're interested in the specific part of our discussion where we talked about this idea, skip ahead to the 39 minute and 19 second point in the video. If gravity and love are two ways of describing the same thing, then love is the only force that exerts itself across the extra dimensions. Does that put a smile on your face? It does for me. Next entry, we're going to look at the concept of simulism. I hope you'll join me then and enjoy the journey.